How many remember True Religion jeans? In the early to mid 2000s, True Religion was a flagship American denim line. They sold for a premium, they could be seen on tons of celebrities, and they gave Japanese denim brands a run for their money. There was a time where having that little horseshoe logo on your butt not only meant that you were a fan of quality denim, but that you were also willing to drop out for them. But over the years, True Religion has fallen off. And if you're wondering why that happened, then you're in the right place. I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com, and this is the rise and fall of True Religion Jeans. But before we get started, don't forget to hit the like button. We're a small channel, and if you want to see us continue to grow, then liking and sharing the video is the best way to do it. It helps the YouTube algorithms notice the channel and suggest us to more people. But with that being said, let's get into the story. True Religion was founded in 2002 by industry veteran Jeffrey Lubell and his wife, Kim Gold. As a teenager growing up in New York, Lubell would bleach bell bottoms and embellish his favorite pairs of jeans with leather and denim patches when they became ripped and worn. But True Religion wasn't his first jean line. Lubell spent more than 20 years in the textile industry before he launched his entrepreneurial career. With his wife Kimberly, Lubell launched two lines of jeans under the Bella Doll and Jeffrey Jeans label in the late 1990s. Lubell's company, Bella Doll Inc., fell behind in payments to creditors and was eventually forced into bankruptcy. But it didn't stop there. The fallout will find its way into the courtroom, sparking a legal battle. And in the end, they got no ownership and, as Lubell put it, was hung out the dry. Jola Design Group Inc. ultimately purchased the trademark and partial assets of both brands. So low key, he was kind of finessed out of his brands. But Lubell would take this as a learning experience and move on. Carefully not to make the same mistakes twice, Lubell and his wife would retool and bounce back with True Religion. He registered the company's trademark to himself and sought an arrangement that would provide an infusion of capital without forcing him to give up the majority ownership of his company. And when it came time to name the new line, Lubell being the spiritual guy that he is stated, there's only one real religion and that's people. And all people in the world wore jeans. True Religion Jeans was an unknown startup company that faced many obstacles to break into the cutthroat denim clothing market. One of which was to position the company as a genuine competitor in the ruthless and crowded retail segment. So they got to work. Lubell would hand out products to employees of clothing stores to gain attention for their designs. They grounded it out and shortly after had created a buzz in the industry within months of launching. The jeans bearing an emblem of a laughing Buddha strumming a guitar and in some cases elaborately embroidered were at the highest end of the price spectrum wholesaling for between $100 and $200, and selling at retail for as much as $465. The line quickly attracted a following of celebrities, providing invaluable exposure. Soon, True Religion apparel was being worn by Madonna, Gwyneth Paltrow, Bruce Willis, and tons of other luminaries, including the entire cast of Desperate Housewives. Lubell succeeded in generating hype for his brand, and he also set up the means to get the most out of the public's desire. During his first year in business, Lubell established distribution and licensing deals in Japan, Canada, Italy, Spain, Germany, Australia, and New Zealand, creating an international network that soon accounted for approximately half of the company's annual sales. In 2003, the company collected $2.4 million in sales and recorded a net loss of $10,000. But in 2024, the previous year's loss was turned into a $4.2 million gain as sales swelled to $27.6 million. Looking ahead, there was every reason to expect further robust growth from True Religion. It seemed like the growth would be never ending considering how fast the success came in after all. Some analysts wondered whether LaBelle would take his company to the next level by developing True Religion into a so-called lifestyle brand in order to strengthen the financial potential and longevity of it. And in July of 2005, the company opened a 900 square foot True Religion store in Manhattan Beach, California 
giving it a new, potentially massive business area to exploit. True Religion thrived in a time where jeans were king. They enjoyed a spot among the elite brands in the industry such as the Vizu and Red Monkey, showing people that Americans could still make premium quality jeans. The sky was the limit, and they thought that there would never be an end to it. But as the Buddha says, all things pass. Lubell once said, everyone wears jeans, and for a time, they did. But the winds of fashion were changing. Athleisure as a trend was taking over. Athletic wear turned into everyday wear, and clothing brands that ignored the consumer shift to stretchy pants would suffer. Instead of adding stretchy fabrics like other denim distributors ranging from Levi's to Stella McCartney, True Religion stuck with their jeans and t-shirt combinations. But by 2012, it was a bit too late. The outlook had began to sour. Competition was up and demand was down. Investors of the brand began to lose faith in LaBelle, blaming him for the lack of innovation. And later that year, the board declined to renew his contract as creative director. So LaBelle decided to shop for buyers and put the brand up for sale. They eventually found a buyer in Tower Brook Capital Partners, a private equity firm that paid $835 million for the company. And in 2013, Lubell stepped down and took a buyout of $6 million. The brand's signature large stitching and flashy logos plastered on t-shirts were suddenly woefully out of style with many younger shoppers. It affected the entire industry as a matter of fact. Everyone in luxury shoes started getting into sneakers and it was the casualization of luxury clothing. Another thing that severely hurt True Religion is the fact that they failed to get a foot in the door of online sales. Online shopping had become a huge thing in the mid-2000s, and brands like True Religion were still trying to sell solely out of brick and mortar locations. And it got so bad that True Religion, after years of declining sales, filed bankruptcy in 2017 for the first time. Lubell once famously stated, quote, if price point was an issue, then customers will go to Walmart and Target, not us. Well, customers didn't exactly go to Walmart, but they did largely go to fast fashion for joggers and leggings, which up until that point, True Religion had stubbornly refused to release. They would eventually release joggers, but it was a bit too little too late. They managed to make it out of the first bankruptcy and tried to keep things going. I say first bankruptcy because True Religion ultimately as a company will file twice more all in an attempt to make a comeback from the hole that they had found themselves in. We did a video a few months back on a collab that they did with Chief Keith, which did include sweats, and they also tried to improve their online reach as well. But it remains to be seen if they can regain the popularity that they had in the past. True Religion as a brand still survives, but they're nowhere near as popular as they used to be. And I guess time will tell if they can make a full comeback or not. I mean, the way trends change and the pendulum swings back and forth, who knows? Maybe jeans can come back in style the way that they once were, and true religion can be there poised to take advantage of the situation. But I guess we won't know until we get to that point. But what do you think? Were you a fan of true religion? Would you still wear them today? Hit us up in the comment section and let us know. Also, if you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to hit the like button. As we always say, liking and sharing the video is the best way to help us to continue to grow as a channel. And the best part about it is it's free. It costs you absolutely nothing to do so. And if you want to be updated every time we drop a new video just like this, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and then the notification bell. That way you'll be dinged whenever a new episode drops. But with that being said, I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com, signing out. Until next time, peace.